Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on variable selection in regression problems. The idea behind variable selection is that you're going to use a subset of the explanatory variables that you have to actually analyze the data that you've obtained. So why would you do this? The idea here is that you might have an extremely large set of explanatory variables and you don't want to include them all. Including them all would likely just fit noise, that is fitting or finding explanatory variables that are significant when in fact they aren't significant. So that would be one reason you wouldn't want to just use all of them. You might just be looking for what is going on with my data. Right? Trying to find some parsimonious representation of your data. And the book uh, Statistical Sleuth refers to this as fishing for explanation. You may be interested in purely a prediction problem. Finding what's the model, given all these set of explanatory variables that I could use, but what's the model that best predicts the data that I actually have, or perhaps more importantly, best fits new data that I could obtain. If you include all the explanatory variables in the model, then it's often the case that the predictions from that model are very poor. <clears throat> all right, so the first and third, uh, there's really no interpretation that you would give to the resulting parameter estimates, nor for their significance, for their p-values. And yet, often when people do these, they uh, do try to then interpret the parameters. And so we should, we should basically try to not do this. All right. So the first and third, if you're just trying to look for a large set, if you're just trying to do prediction, then find the model and just use it. Don't try to go too in-depth on interpreting uh, what's in the model, what's out of the model, nor the coefficients for those terms that were included in the model. All right, so here's <clears throat> here there are a number of different ways that you can decide which model that you want to select. The uh, in linear regression, which is what we've been talking about so far in this course, we've assumed that the data are normal, and when this is uh, assumed, then uh, some criteria that you might think that would be reasonable is to use perhaps r squared. The problem here is that r squared always increases as the number of parameters are uh, increased. So there's this idea of adjusted R-squared, but generally this favors models with too many variables, and so this is not a very good one either. Uh, we have talked about a sort of formal statistical approach uh, through the general F-test, and this works well if you have nested models. But if you're considering all possible uh, subsets of a particular set of explanatory variables, you're not going to always have nested models. Uh, and follow finally, uh, there's another one called Mallow's CP, that's particular to normal data, but it's related to this more general idea of the Akeiki's information criterion, or AIC. And AIC we could also use in uh, other models. In particular, later in the semester, we'll talk about Poisson and logistic regression. AIC could be used for those models as well. There's a different uh, information criterion called BIC, or Bayesian information criterion, where the piece that changes here is the 2 changes to log n. These term on the far side is basically a term that penalizes the number of parameters in your model, where p here is the number of parameters, or number of coefficients in your model. Uh, and then finally, and we'll talk about this today, there's this idea of cross-validation. And the main idea here is that you're going to split your data set up into two parts. One is for uh, constructing the model, and then one is for seeing how well your model does. All right. So if you've uh, chosen a particular criteria that you're going to use, uh, then the first thing that you want to think about is whether you can actually enumerate all the models. And I don't mean you personally, I mean whether a computer could actually just enumerate all the models. Computers can do this fairly well these days. Um, and if that's possible, then you want to just choose the criterion, say AIC, and calculate it for all models and find the model that has the best AIC. Right? But oftentimes that we have too many explanatory variables and the models cannot be enumerated. And this is the... Uh, this is what the book focuses on, and in this case, we're going to choose a criteria just like we did before, and now perhaps use a stepwise variable selection procedure. There are three different versions of this. There's the forward, where basically you start from the model that only has the intercept, and you keep trying to add explanatory variables. Uh, you can do this in the regression setting when using the F-tests. Right? The F-tests uh, needed nested models, and if you always have a smaller model and thinking about adding a particular explanatory variable, then it will always be nested. So that's forward. Uh, backward starts from the absolute full model, as big as you uh, care to look. Uh, 
and it starts trying to remove explanatory variables. And then there's a stepwise, or what the book calls a stepwise approach, that basically tries to do both. It does forward and backward uh, at each iteration. All right, so, so ideally, we would enumerate all the models. If we're in a situation where we can't enumerate all the models and we're particularly interested in variable selection, we would do the latter of this uh, stepwise selection procedure. I'll talk about at the very end, there are still other alternatives uh, that you can use uh, even if you cannot enumerate all the models. All right, so here's uh, just an example of doing AIC uh, stepwise model selection in R, or stepwise variable selection in R. So the idea here is that we start with a model that has SA, SAT score as the response, and it has these variables, uh, explanatory variables in the model. So log of the takers, income, years, public expenditure, and rank. So this is uh, going to be exhibiting a, well this one has the direction as both, so this is going to be the stepwise procedure where we think about either doing either a forward or a backward uh, variable selection step at each step in the model. All right, here the largest model that we're going to consider is this model right here that we started with. So in the first step, in the first step here what's done is that uh, in R the software just says, okay, what would happen if I were to remove all of each of these uh, explanatory variables, but only one at a time. So this line right here refers to just removing public from the model. The next line refers to just removing income from the model. The third line here is not doing anything. So this basically means what's the model at currently? All right, so the idea here is that the model currently has at an AIC value of 327, and a good AIC value is a smaller AIC value. So we're trying to get the smallest AIC value, and amongst the options we have here of removing these different explanatory variables, the one that leads us to the smallest AIC value is just to remove public. All right, so that's the first step in the stepwise section procedure. The next step tries to do the same thing. The best option here is to remove income. So we remove income, then it says, all right, I could try to put income back in the model, I could try to put public back into the model, I could try to remove rank, log takers, years, or expenditure, and none of these improve the AIC model, and so I'm going to stop right here. So my final model is then log of takers plus years, expenditure, and rank. So that's an example of doing this uh, model selection, or variable selection, uh, in this case in R. All right, so the this variable selection um, the, the whole idea of variable selection that we should uh, approach with a bit of healthy skepticism. And I'm going to illustrate this through a particular example where I've actually simulated the data. So here I'm simulating our normal response with a mean mu and a variance of 1. The mu for each observation depends on nine explanatory variables, the first three of which have a coefficient of 10, the next three of which have a coefficient of 1, so no number here actually corresponds to a 1. And the third uh, set of explanatory variables that are important have a coefficient of 0.1. We're going to have uh, 200 observations, and we have 100 total possible explanatory variables. So here, of those 100, only 9 of them we know are significant. That is, we know the coefficients for the others, in reality, in truth, uh, are 0. And I know that only because I actually simulated the data. All right, so the, ideally what we would have from any uh, selection procedure is to recover these nine explanatory variables and to have the coefficients for those explanatory variables for the first three to be around 10, the next three to be around 1, and the last three to be around 0.1. All right, so we can do this uh, in R, for instance. Here we're doing uh, two versions of the uh, stepwise selection procedure. The first one is using AIC and the second one is using BIC, where we have used the same function here, but we just changed the penalty parameter to the log of the number of observations. All right, and so we can see the models that they return. Here's the version for AIC. So AIC returns uh, a model that's really pretty huge. So here's the first three that have a coefficient of 10, so that was good. Here's the next three, which have a coefficient of 1. Uh, it didn't include 7 and 8, which we knew were actually significant, but it did include 9. Uh, but then it included 16, 18, 19, 21, 22, 27, 31, 32, 33, all these, and all of these as well. 
So this is the best model according to AIC, a model that includes a whole bunch of noise, right? We knew, in fact, the coefficients for all these, uh, these, all the coefficients or all the explanatory variables above the ninth one were all zero, and yet here's AIC telling us that some of them are non-zero. Now, you might notice that, in fact, we don't have significance for all of the remaining coefficients. Right? But the idea here is that all we've done is done variable selection using AIC. And this is the result that it gave us. All right, we could try the same thing with BIC. BIC, because the penalty for the number of parameters is larger, is always going to give us a smaller model. And in fact, this time it included the seven of the nine that we knew were important, and then it only included three that weren't, uh, that actually had a coefficient of zero. So certainly much better uh, in this simulation using the BIC as opposed to using AIC. All right, so, um, so the, the idea here from this uh, the healthy skepticism is just knowing that um, when you do your analysis on your data set, you're going to recover some uh, significant or some, uh, co some explanatory variables via the variable selection procedure that are in fact not real signals. So in this case, 16, 27, and 84, we know are not real because we simulated the data. In your data set, when you do it for yourself, you're not going to know which ones are real and which ones are not. So you need to have some healthy skepticism about whether those ones are really important or not. Okay, so a, an improved approach is an approach called cross-validation. And here I'm just going to uh, give a very basic version of cross-validation. The idea here is that we're going to split our data randomly into two different groups. Ha or part of the data is going to go into a training group and part of the data into a testing group. And the idea here is that we're first, for example, going to use a st stepwise selection procedure using the training data. So we're going to use that on the training data, then perhaps fit the model again on the testing data to find our final model. And the idea here is that only those variables uh, that were uh, significant in the last step are the ones that we'd actually want to keep. So this is uh, just one version of doing cross-validation. There are certainly many, many ways of doing cross-validation, and this is certainly not the best one either. It's just to give a flavor for what's going on in cross-validation. All right, so here's certainly a couple of ideas that improve on this, um, but here's the idea of cross-validation. So uh, here's just the code. Uh, this is just for posterity, so people can uh, sort of do it themselves if they wanted to. Uh, but here is the result from uh, that whole process of doing the cross-validation. So now we've recovered only the six uh, of the nine that were important, but they were the six that had the largest coefficients. We have not recovered number nine, and we've also lost another um, explanatory variable that in fact had a, a coefficient of zero. But we can still see that we, even with this cross-validation procedure, we still have uh, included some explanatory variables that we know to have a coefficient of zero. So while this is better, it still doesn't solve all of the problems. All right, so there are, there are alternatives to doing variable selection at all. There's not necessarily any reason that we need to just include a subset of the very explanatory variables. So one is called a Bayesian model averaging. And the idea here is to calculate what's called the posterior probability of the model. And we can actually use BIC uh, to get that posterior probability, or at least an approximation to it. The sum in the denominator here is just the sum of all these e to the BICs. All right. And this P of the model, this is just the prior probability of the model. So this is the prior probability of the model times this ratio of the e to the negative BICs gets us the what's called the posterior probability of the model. Here's the probability of the model given the data that we've actually observed. And now the idea is uh, we're not going to select a particular model, but we're going to use the whole collection of all the models along with their posterior probabilities to make any statement that we would be interested in. For example, a prediction. This is certainly a much more computationally intensive task, especially if the number of models are large, because you have to actually keep around all of the models. Whereas in the variable selection procedure, you could only keep uh, you only had to keep a uh, one model, whichever model resulted from the variable selection procedure. Uh, there are other options. The options here are to actually keep all the variables in the model, but use some way to actually shrink them towards zero. 
And so some ideas here are ideas like lasso and ridge regression and elastic net. All right. So uh, the main idea in this mini lecture was to the idea of taking a regression problem with possibly a large number of explanatory variables and reducing the number of explanatory variables down to a manageable subset of explanatory variables. And uh, the main caution here is to not try to overemphasize the uh, actual estimated coefficients nor the p-values for those explanatory variables that you did, did result in inclusion in the final model. Thank you.